Hey guys, what's up? I'm Juan Cruz for Innerize, and in this video I'm gonna be talking about the concept of anti-fragility. So what would you answer if I asked you which is the opposite of fragile? You may come up with answers like robust, strong, sturdy, tough, or long-lasting. But this is wrong. <laughs> While a fragile thing breaks when there is an external stressor, a robust thing doesn't. But this is not the opposite of fragile. The opposite would be a thing that, when faced with stressors, it gets stronger than before. Think of it like a glass, that each time it breaks, it gets stronger and sturdier. This is what it's called anti-fragile. When something or someone is anti-fragile, it thrives and grows when exposed to volatility, randomness, disorders, stressors, adventure, risk, pain, and uncertainty. Let's see some examples so you can get the gist of it. When you go to the gym and lift some heavy weights, you are putting your muscles under stress. Naturally, the fiber tissues break down when trying to lift something heavy. Then the body repairs the damaged muscle fibers and as a result, you end up with bigger and stronger muscles, right? The same principle full of vaccines. When you, get, when you go to the doctor and get a shot, you are being injected with a weaker version of the virus. Your immune system re responds by producing the necessary antibodies. When you get the real one, the real virus, you will get prepared and not get sick. Another example is the fasting. Many claim that caloric restriction or activates healthy reactions that, among other benefits, lengthen life expectancy in laboratory animals. When the body is put under stress or no food during some period of time, it seems to have positive health benefits. Another example is a business, a businessman or a business, a company, who is constantly making bets and making risky investments. Losing a bit of money here and there, obviously, and making a mistake is more likely to be successful in the long run than a company that doesn't innovate and take risks. Take for example IBM um, and Apple. Apple was always an innovative and um, always trying something new and creating new products. And on the other hand, IBM, um, I mean, they were innovative before, but after a couple of years, they got boring. So the problem is we as a culture and individuals, personally, are designed and programmed to avoid randomness and volatility. We are always looking for the safest, safest pain and free option. Instead of going to the gym, we prefer to stay at home and watch Netflix. Instead of starting a business, we decide to look for a secure 9 to 5 job. Instead of going out and meeting people from the opposite sex, whether it's a girl or a boy, we end up staying at home playing some video games. The question is, are you intelligent enough to realize that the most of the strategies we use to avoid short-term discomfort are harmful in the long run? Obviously, it seems so much better to go for the 9 to 5 job rather than going out of your own. It seems to be so much better to stay at home and not do any type of exercise. But in the long run, it isn't. You are not growing. The trouble is that, as every living system, we have a property called homeostasis, which is the tendency we possess towards a relative stable equilibrium. We don't want to change. We don't want to feel discomfort, we want to stay the same. But the truth of the matter is that even though we make our best efforts to avoid discomfort, randomness, volatility and stress, life as we know it is inherently random and risky. The only constant is change and when we try to hide from risk, we are doomed to failure. Instead of avoiding risk and mistakes, we should embrace them as them, we should embrace them and use them as tools to learn and grow. When you're fragile, you're depending on things to go in a certain way. On the contrary, when you're anti-fragile, you don't care about making mistakes and taking some risk because you know you will going to end up better, stronger, intelligent, wiser, even though you failed, just because you learned from the mistakes you made. So let's see some practical implications of applying the concept of anti-fragility in your daily life. First. Start putting your body in stress, whether it's weightlifting or running or swimming or whatever you choose. Your muscles, when your muscles are not put under stress, they start to degenerate and get weaker. 
like the known phrase, use it or lose it. Second, in regards of planning your life, be more open to options. Instead of having everything planned, knowing where you're gonna work or who you're gonna marry or where you're gonna live and so on, be open to whatever you may can. The more options you have, the more anti-fragile you will be. When you stick to a plan, the more dependent you become on it and the more you will suffer if, if things don't go, don't go as planned. Moreover, you may not be able to accept an incredible opportunity just because you already know what's gonna happen. Take me for example. After doing three years of college in Argentina business, I ended up moving to San Francisco to finish my business degree. It would never, ever, ever, ever occur to me that I would end up in the other side of the world, meeting amazing people, having incredible adventures and learning stuff that I wouldn't imagine possible. Like for example, uh, I went surfing like a month ago and I would never do that in Cordoba, Argentina. It would be impossible. Um, or uh, three weeks ago I went, or, um, I went meditating for a week with Peter Ralston, a really good meditation teacher. And I would never do that in Argentina. I mean, the tickets are too expensive. So, obviously you should be developing a draft on how you want your life to be in the future, but that's necessary. But be open to change, be open to new opportunities that you wouldn't imagine before they happened. Fourth, do something that scares you every now and then. Go talk to that girl or guy you think is cute or run half a marathon or travel longer uh, for a week. It depends on where you feel uncomfortable because growth happens when you do things you don't feel secure doing. Start deliberately putting yourself in situations where you are uncomfortable. That is the only way to grow. Fifth, don't be afraid of making small and intelligent mistakes. Learn from them and be better. What I mean with intelligent is try to make mistakes that don't cost your life or all your money. So for example, me doing this video. I'm probably fucking it up. Uh, I'm probably doing it wrong, but it doesn't matter because w the, the worst case scenario is like, people laugh at me. But what if I invest all my money in like the stock market and I fuck it up? That's a big mistake that you're gonna pay for it like for a long time, for a lot of years. So make small mistakes, make small and intelligent mistakes. Um, to wrap up this, I want to say that wind extinguishing, extinguishes a candle and energizes a fire. Be the fire that grows when there's chaos and uncertainty. You should love them and seek them deliberately. Don't be like everybody else who's constantly figuring out a way to be more comfortable and secure. That's boring and that's what almost every people is doing. Comfort is death. Life is, life's hallmark is movement and change. A life without discomfort or risk is not a life wor worth living. It is boring and it's dead. You don't, want, you don't grow as a person when you're in the comfort zone. You grow when you're out there putting yourself in the line, in the front line, whatever that may be, starting a business, um, starting guitar classes, guitar lessons, or going surfing or moving out of the country or whatever, whatever it may be for you. Growth and mastery don't come easy, it's, it's difficult. The only obstacle between your current life and your dream life is no other than you. You are the responsible for the life you're having. Start embracing pain, discomfort and insecurity. They are the attributes of a life worth living. As Helen Keller said, life is either a daring adventure or nothing at all. And I love, I love that phrase. I actually have it as a background in my, in my smartphone. Um, I'm done guys, thank you for watching, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, leave your comments down below, go to my page inrise.com, subscribe, I'm gonna be posting and creating new resources and stuff for you to become the best version of yourself, the stronger version of yourself as Elliot Hull says, says. and um, I think that if you want to live a rich life, if you want to exploit every opportunity that life offers you, you need to be a master in every aspect of your, of your life, whether it's business, relationships, meditation, I'm gonna talk about a, a lot about these topics in the future, so please stick with me for the long run, for the years to come. Um, thank you and uh, see you next week.